If you've ever found yourself torn between your love of Android, but wish you can get it in the body of an iPhone, you may have just the device you're looking for. I explain why right now in my HTC One A9 review three months later. No, this isn't an iPhone. But if you wish you can get an Android device in the shape of an iPhone, well, here you go. HTC says that it sold aluminum unibody devices before Apple did, and they're right. Ever since the One M7 at the start of 2013, HTC has been promoting its signature aluminum unibody design, characterized by a particular mix of subtle curves and precise straight lines. But hey, the camera, camera flash, and even the corner radius on the A9 device matches the iPhone 6 and 6S. And those antenna bands look awfully familiar as well. The HTC One A9 is an Android smartphone manufactured by HTC. It was officially announced on October 20th, 2015 and was released the following month. In many ways, it's the successor to the HTC One M9, but in global markets, it was sold alongside the One M9 as a mid-range offering. It features a unibody aluminum frame with a Super AMOLED HD display and Dolby surround sound for headphones, or boom sound if you're an HTC fan. It's also got a fingerprint sensor which can be used to unlock the phone. The One M9 holds the distinction for being the first non-Nexus device to be pre-installed with Android Marshmallow and the first non-CDMA phone that's compatible to work with the Verizon network in the United States. Reviews were mixed upon release. Many people criticized the phone for its construction or poor fingerprint scanner, for its high price, and for appearing to be a clone of the iPhone 6. I just found out earlier today though that HTC is running a sale on the One A9 and you can get it for $100 off. So is it worth it? Let's find out as I bring you my three month later review on the One A9. First, let's talk about specs. If you read the HTC One A9 spec sheet, you'd probably think of it as a mid-range phone with nothing special about it. But that's why spec sheets should be ignored for the most part. Using the One A9 shows what happens when a phone makes the most of its components, resulting in a device that compares favorably with other companies' flagship smartphones. On the inside, you'll find a Qualcomm Snapdragon 617 processor, so not an 800 level chip that you find in other flagships. For graphics, it's got the Adreno 405, three gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, a 2150 milliamp hour battery, and as I mentioned, it ships with Android 6.0 Marshmallow, which means you're getting the latest Android release right out of the box. HTC says the One A9 will receive Android updates no longer than 15 days after their release from Google. And by the way, if 32 gigabytes isn't enough for you, the HTC One A9 does support micro SD cards up to two terabytes in size. As for the display, you're looking at a five inch AMOLED 1080p panel. That's 1920 by 1080 with 440 pixels per inch covered in Gorilla Glass 4. The display is all right. It's a little warm, which is typical for AMOLED displays. In bright daylight, it gets a little washed out and it also isn't that great with off angle viewing, but it's passable. And the same goes for the camera. It's fine. It's not the best, but it's not horrible. You're looking at a 13.1 megapixel camera with an f2.0 aperture. It's got autofocus. It's got optical image stabilization. So both of those things are good. Where it suffers is in contrast and dynamic range. In good light, things look decent. And there is the HDR mode that you can enable manually to increase dynamic range, but not by much. It shoots in 16 by 9 by default, so you'll want to change that if you want the more typical aspect ratio for photos. You're not going to be stunned by what the A9 is capable of in favorable light, but you won't be disappointed either. The A9's camera is really just middle of the road. It's fine. It's got multiple modes, including a pro mode that lets you change your exposure, ISO, white balance, and even capture in RAW. For video, you're stuck with 1080p 30 frames per second with optical image stabilization, no 4K. Around front, you've got a four megapixel camera, which is the same one as the ultra pixel unit found on the back of the HTC One M8 and on the front of the HTC One M9. It's got bigger pixels that make low light photography better, but still the camera isn't all that good. Perfectly fine for Snapchatting and other selfies though. Moving on to sound, which has been one of the best features of HTC phones as of late. Unlike the HTC One M9, this phone does not feature the boom sound stereo front facing speakers. Instead, it's just got a mono speaker located on the bottom of the device, so it doesn't sound anywhere near as good as the M8 or the M9. Where audio does shine though, 
is in the Dolby surround sound for headphones, which HTC still labels here as boom sound. You get high resolution audio and it's installed with a DAC digital to analog converter, which upscales the audio from 16 bits to 24 bits. So when you're listening to music with headphones, it sounds fantastic. With the 2150 milliamp hour battery, I was able to get roughly three and a half hours of screen on time. That's not a lot, but it's decent, especially for a phone this size. It does support Quick Charge 2.0, so you can get topped off quickly when you need to get the battery juiced up. Now I did mention mixed reception when the phone was released and I'll point out some of those comments right now. Over on Engadget they said the A9 was not the winner that the company, HTC, needs but praised it for coming with Android 6. On CNET they said it was just fine for a mid-range device and PC Magazine said the construction is impeccable. Over on The Verge they called it a blasphemous concoction of Apple design and Google software. So as you can see it's a mixed bag. My conclusion? I think the HTC One A9 is a good phone. However, the main issue is the price. It sells for $499. It's got decent battery life, above average performance, decent software, decent camera, everything's decent. This is a mid-range phone with mid-range specs with an expensive price tag. It just doesn't compete in a market where you can drop $500 on a Nexus 6P flagship or a Galaxy S6 or an iPhone 6 for that matter. When the A9 launched at $399 in the United States, that was the time to pick one up despite the insane back order. But after a week, the price increased to $499 and that 25% jump in price means that the one A9's value diminishes greatly. You can compare it to the Nexus 6P, which many can considered to be the best Android smartphone to date. No way HTC is going to win that comparison contest, even if simply for the fact that the Nexus device includes long-term assurance that you'll get Android updates faster and for a longer period of time. Honestly, you'll get more for your money if you spend it on an LG G4 and its excellent camera, or Samsung's Galaxy S6 and its wireless charging, or even the iPhone 6 that HTC is complementing with its present design. There are just too many Android alternatives to say that this is a good one to buy, unless you really want something with the look and feel of Apple's flagship. All that said, if you're watching this video today, and today being the day I've recorded it, March 8th, 2016, HEC is selling it for one day only at $399. That's $100 off the $499 price tag, and it makes the phone more attractive, so much so that I'm totally fine recommending it at the $399 price, but only if you get it at that price. For $500, bucks, i would look elsewhere.